This is the future. Welcome back to my channel boys and girls and today we are going to make homemade apricot jam so as always please look at the whole video from beginning to end before you start following along so what we need is two bags of apricots one kilogram each depending on how much you want to make one uh, bag of sugar 2.5 kgs a big pot to stir everything in it and it must be big enough because your content should not go past the halfway mark of the pot otherwise it's going to boil over we are going to start by cutting the apricots in half and removing the pits you're gonna put the pits in one container and the apricots in the other Now sometimes you will see these dark spots on the skin. Don't worry about it, it's normal. If you have a problem splitting the two halves apart, you can always use a twisting motion to break it apart. Now one bag of apricots didn't look like enough, so I bought two of these apricots. So remember to cut both packets in half and add both packets worth of contents into your pot and the pits in the other. The next important step is to measure your empty bowl because you want to get the correct weight of the fruit. Keep the weight of the bowl in mind because we have to subtract that amount from the total weight. Now there's a bowl of apricots and let's measure it. As you guys can see it's about 2 kgs, just a little bit 2.1 and now we have to subtract that 0.2 so it gives us 1.9 kilograms of apricots. The reason for weighing it so carefully is because your sugar to fruit ratio is 1 to 1. If you have 1.9 kgs of fruit you will have 1.9 kgs of sugar. I measured my empty sugar bowl and found out that the weight of the sugar bowl is exactly the same as the metallic one. So it was easy to fill up with sugar. All I had to do is add the sugar until it also came out to 2.1, which was the total weight of our previous bowl with fruit. It is about here where I realized my bowl was too small, so I had to make a plan to level it out a little bit. Thank goodness for rulers! And there you go, the same weight as the fruit bowl. So your next step is going to be to wash your apricots. Because remember if you picked it yourself there might be pesticides on it and if you store bought it there might still be some additives or something on it so it's just safer to wash it. And please do not wash it before you weigh it otherwise your weight will be wrong because your water adds weight to your fruit and then your fruit to sugar ratio is not going to be correct. Now for the preparation. Pack your first layer of fruit. I tried to be fancy so I packed it in a circle, thought it looks cute. Then you add your first layer 
of sugar. Then your second layer of fruit, second layer of sugar, and so on and so forth until all your fruit is packed and all your sugar is over. Then you're going to close the lid and you're going to leave it to stand until the next morning. Um, by doing this, your sugar will melt a little bit and your fruit will create its own moisture. And welcome back to day two and just look at that. That's just from leaving it overnight. Now here is the trick. Get yourself some butter and put it next to you. Then switch on your oven and boil it at a low heat. Not medium, not high. You don't start off high and come down low. You put it on low and you keep it low. It has to boil very, very slowly. Otherwise it's going to overboil. It's going to foam a lot and you don't want to stand there the whole day scooping off foam. When it does start to foam, grab yourself one teaspoon of butter or margarine and just put it in. All it does is it breaks the foam layer, so that you don't have to sit the whole time and scoop foam off. Trust me, it works. Now this is what happens when your oven is boiling too fast, it foams too much and then you have to actually start scooping off this foam. Once the butter kicked in though, the foam went down. My oven plate is a little bit broken. My low heat setting is not low, it's like a medium or high. So I had to regulate the oven. So for guys using a gas stove, I think it's easier because you can actually regulate the flame height. Uh, my auntie does it on, on gas and she can regulate the temperature. As you guys can see, it's boiling a lot. It's not supposed to boil like that, it's supposed to be boiling less. So I had to scoop off most of the foam just until the butter started kicking in. But do it on a low heat, please guys. You see, at a lower, a lower heat, your foam is gone. Now you can actually look at your uh, jam. Oh, another thing is, you don't have to stand by the pot the whole day, but you have to stir regularly because you don't want it to burn. And then some apricots will dissolve completely. Sometimes you get apricots that don't. If you get an apricot that's not dissolving totally, you can always take the apricot out, use a masher and mash it, and then you can put it back. Luckily for me, most of my apricots dissolved completely. As you guys can see how it's boiling, uh, we knew it was a bit prit in Afrikaans, it's just boiling nice and slow. And you're gonna stir this thing now until your syrup is thick enough. Don't wait for all your apricots to dissolve. Sometimes it's nice to have a little chunkiness in it. You do the syrup test. So when you think it's thick enough, you take a little bit of syrup, you drip it onto a uh, saucer, and then you wait until it cools. You can put it in the fridge to cool it faster, but once it cools down, it must look like this. It must have a ripple effect. It must move nice and slow. But if you take a teaspoon and you dip it in, it must drop slowly, nice and thick. Once it's like this, then you know your syrup is right. Or regardless whether your apricots has dissolved fully or not. Once you are done, you can bottle your product while it's still hot. And remember guys, before you bottle it, sterilize your bottles. You can sterilize it by putting it in an oven for 20 minutes or you can wash it properly and let it uh, rinse it off in boiling water for 10 to 20 minutes but it must be sterilized then you just seal it up and you pack it away now thank goodness for videos like this because this was the very first time that i ever made my own jam and the only reference i had was how my auntie's jam used to taste like 20 years ago and I phoned her to find out this, about this uh, exact recipe. And uh, she's very happy with the results, um, well, the pictures that I showed her. So uh, at least you guys have some reference. You guys can see what it's supposed to look like, more or less. I didn't have any of that. I had to go by what she told me. 
So thank goodness for technology. And if you guys want to know how much money did I save, okay, now this is in Rand. So for the American guys or the overseas guys, you're going to have to do the conversion yourself. In South Africa, a small 500 gram tin of jam cost you 28.99 Rand. It cost me about 90 Rand to buy all the ingredients. And I got out seven bottles that each weighed 600, uh, about 650 grams. So let's say the content alone without the bottle was also 500 grams. I made 202 rands worth of jam for 90 rands worth of ingredients. Well guys, thank you for joining me on this channel. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see any videos like this in future. And then uh, for all the normal people out there, have a Merry Christmas, have a blessed and wonderful New Year, and remember whatever you do, keep it safe. Until next time, cheers. Hey guys, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. Give me a thumbs up, because it will really help out this channel. And feel free to drop a comment. Then something new for you all. There is now a Facebook page, so feel free to follow me on my Facebook group. We will be discussing behind the scene features and videos that I have done. Also, don't forget to go to my website at www.cryptzone.co.za where you can go straight to my podcast if you want to by clicking on the podcast icon you'll be taken straight to the anchor podcast page where i do my podcast and remember when you go to my youtube page there will be a place where you can subscribe to my channel um, and remember if you have any comments please feel free to drop me an email and on my youtube front page there is now a paypal donation button where you can feel free to donate to this channel to help it grow and to help to support me. Thanks for watching and until next time, cheers.